I thought it might be fun to show how I'm already incorporating Monster into my workflow and how I've been incorporating it. Um, it's really handy to have basically masters on tap, right? Uh, in, in a master engine that's really advanced and sounds really good, um, and I can put kind of all my brain power to the mix. So I'm working on a new song, new single for a band called Dancer from Portland, Maine, as you can see here. And I was going through and I thought, well, uh, I just want to kind of confirm how I think some of this stat is going to stack up against the master once it's done. Um, so I thought I'd show you how long it takes to actually just master a track in real time. And while we wait for it to master, um, I'd kind of show you some tips and some cool things that I'm doing in this mix too. So the first thing we'll do is we will pull up our window here. And if you haven't signed up for the free trial yet, I definitely recommend that you do that. Um, I'm going to log in and I'm going to upload a track. Um, this is the song that I just bounced. And we're going to call this uh, Dancer um, Rough Mix. Uh, that's all I need to do. It's automatically going to uh, put the date and everything on that for me. So it'll keep it organized. So this is going to upload. I'll bring this uh, window back in a second so you can kind of see how it works and see how fast it really is. In the meantime, so we're not just watching a bunch of meters, uh, I'm going to play some stuff here. One of the interesting things we did on this mix is I put some tremolo guitars. I did a bunch of, <laughs> these are called beef bros because uh, later in the song we, we did uh, super beefy guitars. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I use these same tracks just because they're right and left to put some, uh, put some tremolo tracks in here. And you can see I've also put a little bit of modulation on those. We used my Pog pedal big time on this track too. Yeah, sounds really good. It really adds to the part. Uh, just a quick check back in here. We're already about halfway done uh, with the master, so we will check back on that in just a minute. Uh, that's cruising right along. Um, and let's see, what's this one sound like? Cool. Sounds just, all this stuff is really pretty. And so, you know, when the guys brought me this track, none of this stuff existed. Um, it was really just these guitars. And after, you know, we messed around a little bit, we decided we were really going to make this part sparkle with a bunch of effects and a bunch of cool things. I'm a huge fan of tremolo. I feel like people don't use it enough. Um, subtly, it just gives this movement. Um, in a different way than we get with like drums and that sort of thing. Um, tremolo is really good for creating, you know, like yet another rhythm that you can just tuck behind the mix. So I'm gonna play this part. Uh, listen for when we get to the toms and stuff. All these toms, all these drums came out really nice. Yeah, it's sounding really good. One of the things I wanted to check um, once it's done mastering is I wanted to check out um, how this transition feels because we spent some time on this and we sort of decided that we were gonna have the buildup lean to the right before everything collapses down in the center here. And you can kind of see that happen here. Uh, real quick before I show you that, uh, we are just applying basically the master now. Uh, this will be done, well, very shortly. All right, so listen now how this leans to the right. So it's got a subtle lean. I think it's pretty cool. You definitely hear it more in headphones. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things where I want to make sure I like the the splashiness and like the the real sounding vibe of the the drums here, the organic sound. But um, I just want to make sure that when uh, I'm balancing this, you know, how it's going to react to 
a master. And in this case, if we wanted to, we could completely use this as the final master. Um, so I want to make sure that these symbols, they have a tendency to get a little bit, I don't know, splashier and like can kind of be overbearing in, uh, well, you know, when you get your master back, like that's one of the things a lot of times you really have to watch out for. So that's, that's something I'm going to be really curious on. Um, but I have high hopes. I think that uh, it should sound really good. Oh, one other thing I do. <laughs> this is my, what I call my snare huge track. And that's just this huge reverb send. Um, and I'm going to this plate reverb here and I put it in the mix and I'll automate that. Um, I'll automate that based on the part. So you can see like in the faster parts, I'm going to go with less snare huge. This is just a dupe of that. And then in the uh, slower parts, there's more time between the snares. So then I'm going to, of course, make this a little bit louder. You can see it on uh, the faders here. I should probably name things better, but that's like my fast snare reverb. And that's sort of my like slow snare reverb for the part. Anyway, um, as promised, we are done here. Let's download this. Um, that's fine. And we're going to call this uh master version or something cool um this won't take long to download at all and when it does i'm going to make a track for it um which we can just put here its own stereo track um there we go and we'll just call this master and then we're going to bypass um all my stereo effects and that sort of thing too so that looks good to me and the download has finished, so we can open uh, show in folder and just drag it in. Cool. Um, this should line up perfectly with my cycle markers, uh, which is nice. Uh, there we go. Just move that right to the cursor. And now I can listen to the algorithm, uh, the artificial intelligence. And I've actually, I've never heard this before. <laughs> I swear to God, uh, I didn't do a test run of this or anything. So. Uh, this is the part I was curious about, this really pretty part, going into this heavy part, making sure the dynamics are maintained and that they're pretty, and making sure that things don't get too splashy here. So let's have a listen. Well, I think that sounds very good. I might do a little bit of automation uh, now that I've sort of confirmed that thought here, just when he really starts hitting the symbols. Uh, when he goes into the halftime part, it sounds really good, but so I'll just cut these and I might drop these like, oh, I don't know, uh, half a dB, something like that, just a little bit, just enough. Uh, and then I'll do a little crossfade and that's done. So see how amazingly efficient and nice that was like I just, Kept working on stuff. It took, I don't know, four minutes, five minutes maximum. Put it back in the session. I got to rest my ears for a second in that same way. I didn't have to beat my head up against the wall worrying about like, oh, what's this gonna be like when it's mastered? You know, this is legitimately, it could be finished if I wanted it to, but I can also use Monster as a mixing tool, which you see I've done here just to uh, check out uh, that bias. I thought, you know, maybe the symbols are a little splashy and I was right. Um, and so this is sort of a real time fun test on how I'm using Monster to make my mixes better, uh, enhance my workflow. And now all of my clients, when they get their mixes back, they can hear the mastered versions uh, really easily. Um, and there's no more middleman. They can just uh, hear what the final would be like. And so when they give me mix notes, it's not, it's not anything except what it will totally be like in the end. And it removes that sort of like, well, what's it going to sound like when it's mastered issue that we've kind of had for the entire D of recording ever. So anyway, I hope that was cool. hope that was enjoyable and uh, we'll talk soon.